sometimes you want to take a limit where instead of letting x approach a finite number, you let x get either arbitrarily large or arbitrarily small. Here, x is getting arbitrarily large. That's represented by saying that x is approaching infinity. Here, x is getting arbitrarily small, by which you see we mean not close to zero, x is going to negative infinity. So its magnitude is getting large, but it's going in the negative direction. As an example, where both of these limits exist. We could look at f of x equals the arctangent of x. Let's go to Desmos and ask what happens to the arc tangent as x gets larger and larger. Well, it looks like the arc tangent is approaching 1.57 something. I can be a little more specific than that. As X is getting larger and larger, the arc tangent of X is approaching pi divided by two. As for the limit, as X approaches negative infinity. Let's investigate this on Desmos once again. We'll make all of these x's negative. And this function now appears as x approaches negative infinity to be approaching negative 1.57 something. Again, I can be a little more specific than that. As x approaches negative infinity, the arc tangent approaches negative pi over 2. Unlike infinite limits, which are not limits at all, but rather special ways that limits might not exist, the limit as x approaches infinity or as x approaches negative infinity, these are real limits. And all of the limit laws we know apply to them. For example, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x times the arc tangent of x. We've got a limit of a product here. We've already seen what the arc tangent approaches. 
looking at e to the x, again, let's just look at this on a via Desmos. Let's look at a table. As x approaches negative infinity, e to the x is approaching zero. In fact, it's approaching zero so fast that by the time x has reached negative 1,000, Desmos is rounding e to the x down to zero. So, one function is going to zero, the other is going to pi over two, negative pi over two, I should say. And the limit of a product is the product of the limits. This is going to zero. We have to be careful though, because it frequently occurs that individual limits don't exist. Like if I wanted the limit as X goes to infinity of X squared divided by E to the X, this is a quotient, but I can't use the quotient rule. And the reason I can't use the quotient rule is that neither the numerator nor the denominator are going to a real number. This limit doesn't exist. And this limit doesn't exist. So although theoretically we can use all of our limit rules as usual, it very frequently occurs that our limit rules don't help us. It won't be until we capture this too that we learn a good way for computing this limit.